oil. Top. Nice and messy. Hello. Now, this story will seem to you to be a complete and utter lie. But it really is true. Because my grandfather, who used to tell it to me, used to say, this is completely true, Rick, and if you don't believe me, I'll smash your face in. <laughs> so I believed him. <sighs> so, this is how the story goes. It was a fine summer morning, just before harvest time, and the corn was ripening. The sun was shining brightly, and the warm east wind was blowing gently over the fields. The larks were singing in the sky, bees were buzzing around among the wildflowers, and all along the paths, people were going on picnics, dressed in their best clothes. Every creature seemed to be happy, and the hedgehog was happy too. The hedgehog was standing by his door, with his arms akimbo, enjoying the morning breezes, and slowly singing a little song to himself. Which was no better or worse than the songs which hedgehogs usually sing on a fine summer's morning. And while he was singing, it occurred to him that as his wife, Mrs Hedgehog, was fussing about indoors, washing and drying the children, scrubbing the floor, peeling potatoes, ironing, decorating, dusting, plumbing and rebuilding a wall that had collapsed in the night, and other female tasks of no importance, he might as well take a walk into the field and see how his turnips were getting on. Well, the turnip field really belonged to a farmer, but as Mr Hedgehog and his family stole the turnips more often than anyone else, they'd come to think of them as their own turnips. Yes, said Mr Hedgehog to himself, this is an excellent day for inspecting turnips, because unless my eyes are upside down in their sockets, I've just seen the farmer go out with his wife for a picnic. Mr Hedgehog had not walked very far before he came to a small bush near a field of cabbages. There he saw a hare who he guessed had come out on business of the same kind as his own, namely stealing, uh, inspecting cabbages. As soon as Mr Hedgehog saw the hare, he wished him a friendly, good morning! Ha! But the hare, who was in his way a very tall, distinguished gentleman and uh, frightfully haughty, did not return Mr Hedgehog's polite greeting, but instead gave a fierce, high and mighty look and asked, yeah. Well, how do you come to be running about here in the field so early in the morning? Hmm? I, I, well, I, I'm taking a walk, said the hedgehog. A walk? <laughs> a walk? <laughs> you? <laughs> Laughed the hare. <laughs> it seems to me you might find a better use for your nasty little legs. <laughs> well, this made the hedgehog furiously angry, because he could stand anything. Spiders in his bath, slugs in his breakfast, and, and, and falling face down in stinking mud. But the one thing he couldn't stand was to have his legs made fun of. They were just naturally short and crooked, through no fault of his own. So he said to the hare, mm, you, seem, you seem to think you can do more with your long legs than I can do with mine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is just what I do think, replied the hare. Oh, said Mr Hedgehog, oh. Well, I can always be put to the test. I'm sure that if we ran a race, I would beat you. <laughs> that is ridiculous, <laughs> said the hare. You, with your short, stumpy legs. <laughs> but uh, if you're so very desperate to be made a fool of, I have no objection to racing. What shall we bet on it, stumpy? <gasps> we shall bet a gold coin and a silken handkerchief said the hedgehog. Mm, done, said the hare. Shake hands on it, and we may as well begin at once. <laughs> oh, uh, said the hedgehog, uh, there's no great hurry. I'm, uh, I'm feeling rather hungry. <laughs> I will go home first and have a spot of breakfast. Within half an hour, I will meet you back here. And on his way home, the hedgehog thought to himself, yeah, well, yeah, you know, I mean, Mr. Hare, you know, he may be a, you know, great, big, important creature, but, but he is also a very silly fellow, and he'll pay for what he has said to me. I won't have my legs insulted by anybody! <laughs> Although the hare thinks he'll beat me with his great, big, dangly, long legs, I will find a way to beat him using my brain. And as soon as the hedgehog reached his house, he said to his wife, Wife, dress yourself quickly. You must go out into the field with me. Oh, uh, uh, 
What's going on then? Ask Mrs. Hedgehog. We didn't like to be hurried. I, 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 I made a bet with the hare for a gold coin and a silken handkerchief <laughs> to run a race with him, and you must come along. <gasps> My goodness, husband. Are you out of your senses? Squealed Mrs. Hedgehog. I, are you not right in your mind? Have, have you completely lost your wits? Do you know what you're doing at all? How can you expect to run as fast as the hare? Hold your tongue, wife. That is my affair. Don't even begin to discuss things which are matters for men. Be off. Dress yourself and come with me. Well, what could the hedgehog's wife do? Her husband had obviously gone raving mad, so she thought she'd better come along, whether she liked it or not, in case he did himself some damage. She pulled on her clothes and she muttered to herself, oh, it's typical. No, it's typical. Here I am with everything to do, and he comes bouncing in with another one of his foolish ideas. I mean, what a creature to be married to. Why, only last week he came home in the middle of the night after drinking far too many cups of blueberry wine and, <clears throat> and woke up all the children shouting that he wasn't a hedgehog anymore. He was a giraffe, whatever that may be. I mean, and then he fell over and spiked himself on his own spikes. I mean, it's typical. The whole thing is... Well, anyway, when Mrs. Hedgehog had dressed and made a few more complaints, they set out on their way. And Mr. Hedgehog said, now, pay attention to what I say. The hare and I will start to run from the top of the field, right? You must hide behind the hedge at the bottom of the field. And when the hare runs towards you at the bottom of the field, it, I'm sorry to say bottom, but it is important, you must jump out and shout, I am here already. Do you understand? Oh, whatever you say, husband. Oh, yes, of course. I'll just jump in this muddy ditch until the hero comes along and then jump out and tell him a barefaced lie, wait for you to lose the race and hand over a gold coin and silken handkerchief. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea. Well, thank heavens I married you. I'll just get in the ditch, woman. And Mr. Hedgehog shoved her in. Splosh. Then he walked up to the top of the field where the hare was waiting. <laughs> so, are you ready to start now, Titch? Yes, I am, answered the hedgehog. And they both took their places to start. Once, twice, thrice, and away! <laughs> cried the hare, and he ran down the field like a whirlwind, while the hedgehog only took three steps and then returned to his place. The hare <laughs> ran all the way at full speed and soon came near the edge of the race. But before he could reach it, the hedgehog's wife appeared in front of him and she called out, I am here already. The hare was thunderstruck to hear this. He thought it was Mr. Hedgehog, because most hedgehogs do look exactly alike. This will not do, he shouted aloud. No, no, this will not do at all, no, no. no th the race cannot have been run fairly. It must be run again. Let us have the race again. And once more, pow, he went off like a rocket. So fast he seemed to fly. But the hedgehog's wife stayed quietly in her place. So when the hare reached the top of the field, the hedgehog himself cried out, Oh, hello, I'm here already. <laughs> <coughs> The hare, quite beside himself with anger, screamed, It must be run again! We must have it again! All right, all right, answered the hedgehog. As far as I'm concerned, we can run as up and as you like. So, <coughs> the hare ran off 73 times more. And the hedgehog always won. Every time the hare reached either the top or the bottom of the field, either the hedgehog or his wife jumped up and said, I'm here already. On the 74th race, the hare could no longer reach the end. In the middle of the field, he poof, fell to the ground, dead on the spot. <sighs> the hedgehog took the gold coin he had won and the silken handkerchief and called his wife to his side. Mrs. Hedgehog smiled at him for the first time in years. <laughs> so perhaps I didn't marry a buffoon after all, she said, and kissed him on the end of his nose. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness, said Mr. Hedgehog. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And he blushed to the tips of his spikes. And very happily, they went home together. And if they're not dead, they're living there still. So that is how it happened that the hedgehog made the hare run races with him till he died. And since that day, no hare has ever made fun of a hedgehog. And certainly, no hare will ever run races with a hedgehog. <laughs> The moral of this story is that no one, however important they might be, should tease anyone who seems less important, even if it is only a hedgehog. Uh.